with Fran McCaffrey, and that's what the lineups look like today. You see Terrence Shannon Jr., Chris Murray, two big-time scorers. Yeah, Terrence Shannon Jr. is a heat-seeking missile in terms of drawing contact, getting to the free throw line. He does it. Illini and Hawkeyes, here we go again, and it's Illinois in the orange first. I watch for the Illini to try to establish Dane Danger in the post to start the game. In the high post danger, here is the freshman Jaden Epps getting to the rim, can't score, Murray the rebound. Jaden Epps does a fantastic job of getting to the rim. Well, one leg shot for Murray, that's no good, one and done for Iowa. Hawkeyes 82 points a game, Illinois only allows 63 a game. Yeah, something's got to give today, whether the offense will prevail for Iowa or the defense for the Illini, but one trend will be established here quickly. Meyer in the corner, buries a three, and since he was sick in the Indiana game, he has shot the ball very well. Yeah, he's averaged 15 points a game over the last 14, and double figures in 12 of the last 14, so tough matchup for opposing teams. Taking a bunch of threes the last couple games as well as he gets a hand on the ball. Eight for his last 22 coming in from three the last two games, and here's his first three today. Well, Terrence Shannon is going to draw kind of a lot of bodies whenever he gets in the paint. Nice job of looking opposite. Got a top three Big Ten mustache <laughs> to go along with it. I think top three in the country. That very well could be. <laughs> Philip Rocha, who Brad Underwood called the most improved player in the Big Ten as we talked to him before the game today. Uh, he's He's been a double-double machine and got his hands full guarding Dane Danger. We missed that shot, and here is Murray, who's very willing to dribble the ball up. Murray bags a three to the top. Well, one of the reasons why Chris Murray is so difficult to defend is because he's got the neon green light, not just the regular green light. He can let it fly at any time. Yeah, they replace the bulbs all the time in that green light for him, too. <laughs> well, nice job of Perkins. Getting a little space for Murray and smooth release. Steven, I'm glad you said it that way because there was not a whole lot of space for him to get that shot off. No, he, he never needs space because at 6'8", six, 6'9", six, and he's got an advantage being left-handed. Danger right down the lane line for a hammer. Now that's 6'9 and 6'10 in a ball screen action. That's tough to defend for anyone. Yeah, what do you do with that? Hope and pray, maybe. I don't know. But uh, you got to try to keep Meyer out of the paint at 6 9. If he gets down that low, he's going to create havoc. Perkins probing, dropped the shoulder, offensive foul, Tony Perkins. Back to the dunk and that action you're talking about. Well, here's an advantage. So Meyer is 6 9. You see with the hesitation dribble, draws two defenders. And he's able now to just lay it over the top, and there's no backside help. So nice floor space and execution by the Illini. They got Meyer on track very early at Wisconsin. Here's Danger again. Two-man game with the forwards. Well, Danger getting it established early on. And Illini like to go to him in the post, but now they're getting in some ball screen action. And a foul down low on a discard. It goes against Illinois as Rabracha hit the deck. Brad Underwood, last we saw him last game, he was sitting alone yeah. on his bench as a motivational technique for his team, which ended up beating Nebraska by 16. Yeah, he's done a fantastic job with this group. Nine new players had to replace his top five scores. That's awfully difficult to do, and so you're going to have growing pains. And his team has adjusted well, and they seem to be in a nice rhythm right now. One of the hottest teams in the Big Ten and the country. The Fighting Illini at 16 and 6, 7 and 4. Murray whirling in the lane for two. How sweet was that? <laughs> the Illini did a good job defensively, but that's just better offense. And that's the efficiency of Chris Murray. And the improvement in him as well as Meyer got McCaffrey in the air and a oh, wild man. shot goes down. Oh, man. Shot maker, shot creator. Matthew Meyer coming out hot here to start. 
That only loss for Illinois in the stretch we've been talking about. Seven of eight was against Indiana. Meyer was under the weather, didn't score at all, and they were a totally different team. That splashes down for the junior, Tony Perkins. That's beautiful concentration by Perkins. Shannon couldn't have been in much better position on the release. Perkins has done a very nice job last couple games getting to the foul line. He got into the paint there. Epps, a revelation in the starting lineup recently, and it's one and done for Illinois off his miss. This is where I was very difficult to defend. You got to hustle back defensively. One of the keys that Brad Underwood said was defensive transition. They create spurts so well in this arena. That was the fear for Brad Underwood. Yeah, they get the crowd and the energy. That lob went um, to CID Airport. It should have been a lot of basketball. That was a tip on the pass. Well, we got a good one, just like we thought. Perkins with the spot. You know what? I, I think it's uh, some good gamesmanship. Yeah. And it's, it adds to the lure of this rivalry. And so no harm, no foul. And the beneficiary, as you mentioned, was the boys and girls club. Yeah, there are really no villains. I mean, the, the Orange Crush has done that for years, yes. where they've gone to another place and they've posed as somebody else yep. and they've uh, revealed that they're Illinois fans. Yeah. It's a cool prank. It is. But, you know, they got caught. Yep. And Iowa ended up doing something very charitable, so everybody's away. There you go. You like that resolution? I love that resolution, oh, actually. It's, it's very nice. Yes. Meyer. Missed it for three, and we're going to get a hold on the rebound against the Hawkeyes down low. It's on Murray. Well, it looked like Murray got the hand of Ty Rogers. Kind of held him down here, right there. And you know what? The Illini are such a good rebounding team, and Ty Rogers is an excellent rebounder off the bench. Mm -hmm. So I understand Murray paying attention to Rogers trying to keep him off the offensive glass. This is Shannon crossover into a three. Boy, that's tough to stop. You've got to respect his ability to get to the hole. You give up a little space. He knocks down the triple. He told our viewers this could be a fantastic game. It's going to be back and forth action. We figured there would be more offense than last Saturday at the Cole Center in the first, and this is going to be a step on the end line, and Illinois turns it back over. Rodgers was on the end line. We watched Ty Rodgers along the baseline start that puppy. Got that left puppy on the line there. And then Shannon, you was doing the right thing, giving space. And then Shannon just takes advantage of it. Now we got a timeout on the floor. The officials are going to the monitor. Uh, but when you talk about giving Shannon space, I mean, he's so good at creating foul shots for yeah. himself. You kind of have to defend him. You, you have to. You? Yeah, you, you, you can't crowd him because, one, he's too big and powerful, and I think they're going to look at this. I thought it was clearly out of bounds. Bob Riley was on top of that. This is a shot clock question here, or game clock question, maybe. I think you're right. 20 seconds yeah, shot a good call because they can't they can't by rule review anything other than that clock situation so it had to have been something like that and we do get confirmation from Lewis Garrison Murray off the screen missed it off the front iron and the rebound for Rogers Shannon in a big hurry with the left. It got rang off the backboard, which turned into an Illinois recovery. Boy, great hustle that time. Going for the loose ball by both squads. Illinois is a beneficiary. This is good action. Shannon tried to rifle it up the lane, and it's out of bounds. Turnover, Illinois. Brad McCaffrey... One of the longest tenured Big Ten coaches now in year number 13. Philadelphia guy came through Siena, UNC Greensboro, and he's become a stalwart here, chasing down Dr. Tom Davis for Big Ten wins here at Iowa. Well, the Iowa program has historically been offensively high octane. Fran McCaffrey is an offensive genius, in my opinion. 
does a great job of getting his guys confident and putting them in position to succeed, especially on this end of the floor. There is his son Patrick checking in early in his third game back after a leave from the team as he was dealing with anxiety. Nice hands there to spring that ball free by Illinois, and it spins in anyway for Perkins off the tip from Harris. Tony Perkins, he his eyes lit up when he saw Sincere Harris kind of bulldog him a little bit in that possession. Harris had been starting on the last four coming off the bench, the freshman from Canton. Here is RJ Melendez losing the ball on the drive. Shannon wants to go to work again into the crossover. Missed it strong that time. He's got the space once again. Peyton Sanford. No, sir. Uh, Peyton Sanford can score in the phone booth, though. <laughs> Every time he goes up for a jumper, it always looks like it's going in. As long as it's worth three inside the phone booth, he's very willing to take the shot. Back to Perkins against Harris. Well, you see, you didn't see in this sequence that he bumped Sincere first. Then gets the ball, keeps the straddle position where Harris is between his legs, but it doesn't matter. Gets the jump of the roll. Shannon will come out here maybe for a minute and change, leading to the timeout at under 12. On the inbound, tipped away by Perkins, but recovered by Rogers, who once again threw it to the border. See, I Iowa does a really good job of defending inbounds action. And they tried that time Perkins almost came up with a steal resulting in a turnover Illinois does play some high turnover games averaging combined them and the opponent 27 and a half per Here is McCaffrey and Patrick McCaffrey What a story he's been in his third game back His father Fran very happy with where Patrick is we saw him very early today out shooting here at Carver Hawkeye Down the lane, what a nice move. Ty Rogers got everything in his bag, I'm telling you. Once he works that jump shot to be more consistent, every aspect of the game he can touch. You've been high on him all year. I'm telling you, he, he's always got the bloodline. Jason Richardson, mm -hmm. nephew of Jason Richardson. He works with Glenn Blackwell and Michigan. And then turn of the corner by Rebracha for his first two. Robracha, you, you referenced it earlier how much respect Brad Underwood has for Philip Robracha. For the big reason why Iowa's gotten caught here in their last five games. His father, Jelko, a 16 year pro, played in the NBA. Meyer against Robracha, who stayed with him well, but Meyer scored anyway. Yeah, Meyer's a tough matchup. He's one of the unique players in the Big Ten. That size, his ability to put it on the deck, you gotta respect his three-point shooting ability, so he's very difficult to match up against. Rebrasha trying to pull Danger out of the paint, missed the two, taken away by Sanford, and Iowa recovers. Tony Perkins with the quick hands on the slap down, gets his team another possession. Perkins behind the screen, sinks the three. See, Tony Perkins can get going now. He got his first shot to go, and he's getting the crowd involved. You are used to them standing here. Yes. Off the oh. bin, and it's Rodgers again. <laughs> Took Patrick McCaffrey into the popcorn pop at that time. Well, that's a heck of a response, because this crowd is on their feet. We got as many points already as we did in Illinois, Wisconsin in the first half last Saturday. Exactly 36. Great point. Rebracha, so much for 36. Let's see, and this tempo is going to favor Iowa. Because they can score with the best of them. That's a good point. This is not the type of game Brad Underwood wants to be in, I can imagine. Murray tried to hit it up ahead. McCaffrey got there and just missed. Boy, you know what? R.J. Melendez saved that layup. If he doesn't get that deflection, that's an easy deuce from McCaffrey. And you see the guys, everybody on the floor's mouths are wide open. They're a little gassed right now because the tempo has been really fast. Where do you find the energy is the question. 
Danger off the window. Couldn't get it to sit. It's a half percent his lift goes. Sanford pull up. Nobody stopped the ball. And he throws it down. Peyton Stanford has four games of 20 or more. No coincidence, Iowa plays well when he does that. Well, he's a unique scorer at 6'7". He can put it on the deck. He's an excellent cutter off the ball. But boy, can he shoot it. Danger trying to rip through. Gets a whistle we've been waiting for for a while. Well, Iowa hits 10 threes. They are in great shape, and they have started the game. But those kids that got to center court, they'll never forget that. Yeah. In the middle of Carver Hawkeye, with the state that they grew up, they get an ovation like that, they will never forget it. So cool. Yes. Uh, really good job to make this into something positive. I agree. And we're obviously going to have a whale of a game here, back and forth to this point. Illinois down five, largest lead for the Hawkeyes. Off the spin, Coleman Hawkins. Meyer slid in there and went glass. Look at the front line of the Illini right now. 6'9", 6'10", 6'10". Hawkins, Danger, and Meyer. Allows them to really crash the offensive glass. McCaffrey to McCaffrey and free throws coming for Patrick McCaffrey. You may have seen Josh Dix on the floor, the freshman. He's in for Peyton Sanford, who got knocked back maybe in the shoulder by Dane Danger. Yeah, watch Sanford's right hand. He goes for the steal and watch his arm come up. And he probably felt a little stinger in his shoulder. So he got back to the locker room, got checked out, and he's feeling better, hopefully, because he's back on the bench. Yeah, here was Sanford during the timeout. He was feeling that hit from danger. Who was the guy that posted you up? And I know it wasn't all the time you were getting posted up, but do you have a memorable, I got posted up by that guy and it hurt? Oh, I mean, take your pick, Ed Horton. <laughs> uh, uh, let me think, Matt Bullard, Brad Lowhouse, uh, Jerry Wright. You, you, you bring it back nightmares for me, Jason. I'm sorry to do that. You no, know, we were. I was 0 4 in this building. How? Why? Because the Hawkeyes were that good. Mm. That, they were that good. Were you close? Our, they were. They were great games, but you know, you, you're going against B.J. Armstrong and Roy Marble and uh, Bill Jones, Kevin Gamble. By the way, all those are NBA players that I'm referencing. Mm -hmm. They had tremendous talent here. <laughs> against Murray stepped through somehow slid it to danger and that's got to be three seconds it is well Hawkins sometimes gets in a situation where I think he forgets he's 6'10 yeah. because when you're that point blank range to the basket there shouldn't be looking to pass he try to finish and I think that threw danger off thus the, the turnover Tom Izzo said the other day they never called three seconds <laughs> they did they did once today. Yeah. It's not a call you see very often, though. He's not wrong. If McCaffrey had that go short. McCaffrey thought he got fouled on the release, but that was good re recovery by Meyer. Epps slithering through. Got two again. <laughs> Illinois getting the rim pretty well. I'm telling you, I love Jay Epps. Gets to the rim as well as any point guard in the conference, let alone being a freshman. Murray got the flyby, extra pass, one more, it's Dix, got it. Well, I like Dix. I mean, this kid can flat out shoot it, and it gives him another long-range guy to space the floor. Good ball movement by the Hawkeye. 13th three of his freshman year on the Council Bluffs in Lincoln High School. Meyer got the feet set, thought he got hit, he wanted a four-point play, he'll have to settle for three. Well, he did a good job of, of maintaining his focus, because McCaffrey was right in his grill. Still got it to drop. The good doctor on our right is letting Matthew Meyer hear about it on his way down the court. Uh, the tip rebound for Hawkins and a foul against Connor McCaffrey. You like good three-point shooting? I do. All right, good offense. That's why we're here, right? I think so. You know, Jason, Jason Dix from Long, uh, Josh Dix. Like Chris Murray. But he's got a green light from three from Brad Underwood. And he can, I mean, he's unorthodox in the way that he can score. His feet look like they're not set, but he can still elevate and finish. 
Danger into Rebracha. That is pretty. And that's the first time that Danger's gotten the ball in the post. And if I was not going to double team him, I'm surprised the Atlanta haven't taken more advantage of that. Yeah, they did not show double there at all. As DeSante Bowen is in along with Josh Dix. And the freshman turns it over. Quick hands by Colin Hawk is there forces the turnover. Well, Danger wanted the ball. Give it to him. Yeah, see, he puts the hand up where you can throw on the rock. And there's the pressure by Iowa. Three-quarter court pressure with Chris Murray at the top of it. Can give opposing teams fits with Murray's link. Illinois has more, made four straight shots, including that make from Danger. Wide open, Rodgers didn't take the two. Instead, Myers flashes down a three. Wow, great decision by Rodgers. I was like you, Jason, thinking, okay, he's going to go for a reverse layup, but that's a practice jumper for Meyer in the corner pocket. Uh, and you just saw it pop up off the score bug there. An 8-0 run, about 80 seconds for Illinois. That's how this game is going to go. Don't get too comfortable. <laughs> that's right. With Rodgers, it looked like he changed his pivot pick. Yeah. Man, that's good defense by Coleman Hawkins. Hawkins wants Meyer to have it. Meyer wants Hawkins to have it. Hawkins is posting going. up. They didn't get it to him. Epps instead left it short. Didn't you think that should have gone into the post? I did. Anytime you got Hawkins like that, you got to give him that wraparound bounce pass. You want a good wraparound pass? Here you go. Nice job by Rodgers. Again, I thought he could have tried for a reverse, but he knew better getting it to the hot hand. Rodgers, about nine minutes already on an average of 14 for the year. We have not seen Peyton Sanford come back into the game after that apparent shoulder injury. And we get a foul against Illinois, just the third and a half against the Illini. Wow, that's, that's a second on Meyer. Part of the reason with Sanford, too, I have to imagine, is he has two personals yes. as well. Meyer has two, and he'll go to the bench. So now what does Illinois look like on the offensive end? We'll see with Meyer being such a focal point so far. Well, the, the luxury for the Atlanta is that Terrence Shannon can get hot as well. So you take out your hottest hand, but you've got another guy that could get Hot very quickly. Oh, nice backdoor cut. Murray will go to the line. Beautiful backdoor cut. Coleman Hawkins tried to deny the pass. Murray cuts backdoor, receives the pass, and draws the contact. Man, he is so much fun to watch. What do you like most? His efficiency. No wasted motion. No, you know, he's he's a high IQ guy. You saw Hawkins got too high. Goes to the bucket, draws the contact. He's really good from the free throw line because he's there quite often. This Murray, ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at one of the best players in college basketball. 20 and a half points a game, eight and a half rebounds, very similarly to his brother and the growth that he showed before going off to Sacramento. As dangers off the floor as well with two persons. So now the Illini. Their versatility will be tested. Good steal by Chris Murray. Look for Rabrasha to maybe get a touch in this sequence. Here he is at the foul line. They'll go high low with Murray. Turning on Shannon, hemmed in there. Nice defense by Shannon. Bowen. Has to get it up, swatted away by Hawkins. Oh, great recovery. Boy, Hawkins not scoring the ball a lot, but he's doing a lot of other things. Coleman Hawkins and Illinois by a point under four of the first. Get up your toe for a little bit, then hopefully you can regain your focus and figure out your roles. And that's what both teams have done. Get a pseudo pressure by the Hawkeyes. And Illinois doesn't have any problem with it. Tend to shoot for the Illini, and Rodgers playing a lot of minutes early in this game. 
Coleman Hawkins hasn't scored. Here comes the double. He's caught in the corner. Tried to whistle it around the corner and taken by Verbracha. Batted back by Shannon. Deflected again and Shannon to Hawkins. Ooh. And a foul and a big hit on the oh, deck here the parquet. Hope Coleman Hawkins is all right. So, I'm hope and in the game who have struggled from the free throw line this year. Hawkins is a 66% shooter, and that's his first point today. I'm glad just to see him get back up because that was a hard fall. One of four Illini players ever with a triple double. You saw the other is Io Dosumu, who's off to the NBA with the Bulls, the most recent one. And that Mark Smith, who was the first player on that list, is no longer with us, but boy. He, talk, he was before his time at 6'8", multi-skilled player to, to flat out ball. Perkins off the shot fake, missed it. Sergio McClain, of course, in 2001, one of the great Illini players as well. Lost it on the way up. He wanted to dunk the ball, but didn't have control of it. Tie, uh, turnover, Illinois, going to Iowa. You won't see Shannon lose the basketball unless there was some kind of contact or something. Oh. I mean, where does it think he knocked it out? But that would have been a line of basketball if that was the case. Instead, it's Iowa with it. Over four minutes without a field goal for the Hawkeyes here. And that'll continue on the air ball from Eulis. Thought for a second they were going to see if you check in there on that <laughs> cross court pass. It, it was coming. That's out of bounds and it's tipped by Iowa. Now yeah. this is the pace Illinois wants. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. When uh, both teams are not at just exchanging buckets, but the Illini get the, a chance to grind here in the half court set. Hawkins straight away, too short, got his own miss, and then read the engine to get down the lane and miss again. And a foul on the third chance. Boy, Coleman Hawkins seems energized since he got that foul. Really aggressive. This is, this is the NBA range three. This is all rebound. Watch him just draw the contact. This is twice and gets it back. Coleman Hawkins. Doing his best Moses Malone imitation. Mm. I like that. Good cop. <laughs> Second foul on McCaffrey, by the way. Uh, coming up next, Chief Halftime Report. Mike Hill, Casey Jacobson, Donnie Marshall uh, in the Big Ten at Madison Square Garden earlier. Michigan State and Rutgers and already two upsets in the top ten in college basketball today. Uh, Purdue, a unanimous number one right now. Yep. But then everything else, who knows? Exactly. I mean, you know, Houston has stubbed their toe a couple times. Alabama has had a, a rough go of it here. Uh, Tennessee gets upset. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's that time of year in college basketball. Oh, beautiful. Oh, nice pump Sincere. fake and the recovery by the Illinois defense. Sincere Harris came out of nowhere. And they're going to get a foul before the shot. No shot for Euless and no free throws coming back to the Harris block. Man, Sincere Harris is outstanding defensively. And Coleman Hawkins gets faked out. But that's team defense right there. Sincere Harris coming. Backside. Perkins doesn't see him. Just pancake that out of the hand of Perkins. into Hawkins. With Rocha to the left hand, spun it out. Tell you what, man, Coleman Hawkins has not scored the basketball a lot. He has played a whale of the first half. Just let that short. Oh, the flying tip in for Illinois and Rogers. You know what? I'm good with Hawkins taking that. He's done so much work on the defensive end, and that's a, a thing that Rogers keys in on is the offensive glass. Steal their largest lead for the Illini off a 6 0 run. Euless lost it on the way up, and they'll punch it ahead and try and hit for the touchdown. Instead, it's taken back by Perkins. On the lob into the post, it's LaBrocha. Crowd wants a goaltend, and they will count the basket. I don't 
second guess. I thought that was on the way up. Yeah, I, I think that I think that shot right there. Ooh, it was close. It was close. Yeah, I can see. Okay. I was with you on the first look. I yeah. think you and I both thought it wasn't at first, but then looking yeah. at the replay. Yeah, no, it's a good call. I buy it. Yep, yeah, good call. That was on Rogers, his first. And a three-point play for Rebracha. And a four-point game with under a minute to go in the first. Riley Mulvey coming in for some rare minutes late in the first half for Fran McCaffrey. And look at this pressure by Iowa. Turn it up just a notch with McCaffrey at the top of the pressure. He just barely kept control of the basketball through that pressure. Epps swung it into the corner. Melendez missed the three. And here comes Eulis. He wouldn't go for Dix. Cannon. Every time Josh shoots the basketball, it looks like it's going in. Yeah, it was right on line. Didn't get it to go, though. And now Fran McCaffrey wants a timeout. He is on the floor. I think he's man. Sneaky racing fan. Can I, can I call you a gearhead? Oh, you could. Okay. You could. I like it. I like that. People have called me a lot meaner things. <laughs> Ten seconds for Iowa. Dix, the freshman, just hounded by Harris. It's Murray with three. Murray's got to shoot. And he knocks it down. Tremendous finish by the Hawkeyes in the first half. Illinois seemed like they had the floor. Right? That's amazing. Yeah. Well done by uh, Max and our crew. And here we go. Second half, 36-35. Illinois with the lead. The only meeting between the Hawkeyes and the Illini this year. Set play to get Rebracha in the post. He didn't see any daylight with danger, so out in the high post now. Murray late shot clock against Hawkins. Thought about the step back instead, roaming into the paint to turn and That's a cool move right there. Get to the post, spin and fade. And at 6 9, you're not blocking that shot. And never any panic either. So. No. Not, none whatsoever. Danger. Spinning baseline. Somehow got it on the rim. And here comes Murray on the break for Iowa. The D by Rebracha. Here's Rebracha. Well, generally, the first five minutes of the second half is the most important juncture of the game. And Iowa establishing themselves offensively. Illinois now nine turnovers in the game on an average of 13 and a half. Danger, that roll to the rim, and he is fouled going up. Coming last time down the floor, looked like there was going to be a turnover. Danger leaves his feet. Rebracha makes him pay. Good hands by Coleman Hawkins. But nice pass, fake, and finish by Rebracha. So danger to the free throw line where he's at 49% for the year, 31 for 63. And that was beautiful. And it's, a, it's interesting that he can't be more consistent from that space. I think he'll get better, but it's it's repetition and confidence. You're getting very sleepy. <laughs> two for two. Softer touch that time than we've yeah, seen. Yeah, a nice follow. Through. He's, he's got the mechanics. He's got the touch. Tony Perkins, you're talking about it at the half. Seven early in the first half, and then nothing since then for Perkins. Eulis is fouled. Foul ball. Shannon doesn't like the call. That's a tough, those are tough actions to cover. The down screen and the hard curl by Ewis catches the ball in the paint, putting a lot of pressure on the defense. Why is that so tough to cover? And just the angle that he's coming off the screen and with Jay Nepps trying to catch up like similar to this. 
Murray off the screen, rimmed it out, and the rebound did hit the ground for Epps. Roman Hawkins had all four of his first half points from the free throw line. No made field goals so far. So Connor McCaffrey forcing Meyer way outside. Meyer on the kick to the corner and a three for Shannon. Well, that's good action. You get Meyer and Shannon on the same side. You force your defense to make a decision. Little shoulder fake for Blacha. That's blocked by Danger. Overplay by McCaffrey. Didn't get him the ball. Danger ripping through to score. But nice job of keeping his body between he and Murray on the finish. Meyer just gave him the what are you doing, buddy? Oh, that's gonna be interesting to watch as they come down the floor and it's a foul against Iowa. Meyer just had a wry smile on his face on the rip through by Connor McCaffrey and a little tension starting to build. And Meyer and McCaffrey are kind of smiling. They're not nothing serious going on, just just good gamesmanship. Everything stopped, just dead in their tracks. <laughs> Mike was like nothing happened, but yeah, and I think McCaffrey based on the look on his face might have said something like I had to try Oh, yeah, no, it, it's all good fun Shannon such a strong fast first step, but he lost it out of bounds He gets downhill in a hurry, doesn't he? He does, he does, and that time Somebody, uh, an offside defender got a hand on that basketball forcing the turnover 7-0 run for the Illini. Caffrey the screen got Murray the ball. Murray and Hawkins. Murray spins back inside the hand from danger that time. Dislodged it. Now Murray down to the deck picks it up for Iowa. McCaffrey missed it for three. Shannon gonna try to score. Oh, I thought he was gonna try to get to the bucket. I was with you instead. It is F for two. Illinois on an 8-0 run. Boy, Jay Nemps playing like an upperclassman. Put his shoulder into a brotch to get the space. He was a big-time scorer basically all of his high school career. 26 points a game as a sophomore in high school. And we have a whistle on the pass by McCaffrey, who is still talking with Meyer. And Meyer's saying that one's on me. And they, by the end of this 16:05 here, that's the third on Meyer. Matthew Meyer and Connor McCaffrey might have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. There's been a ton of conversation between those two, and it it seems to be above board. I mean, everybody else has a podcast. You're Why right. not get them a podcast? You're right. My, uh, Murray misses the three, and the rebound for Danger. Well, Dane Danger's had an outstanding game thus far. Has really been dominant on the glass and defensively as well. Out to screen here. He didn't get it on the roll. Instead, it's up. Not seeking. <laughs> Boy, when you got a point guard that can create like that, you've got wings like Maya and Shannon. Illinois, some offensive versatility. Largest lead for the Illini behind their freshman from the Tidewater area. Well, Jay Nips, wrap around, have him on your squad. And he and I exchange a few elbows and pleasantries uh, throughout our time going against one another. I was trying to get back in this danger with the challenge, and he might have been called for his third personal there. Well, they're going to get Rodgers instead. It's the second on Rodgers. The most excited people are our advertisers with the coach, you know, not underdog. They're underdog. Okay, so we're going to see a lot of underdogs have some success in the Big Ten tournament. I'm with you. I, I, those middle games, like the 8-9 game, yeah. is just going to be ridiculous. Yeah. People are going to be playing for their tournament lives. I agree. And then you're coming off of a 20-game marathon of a regular season. Some of these teams will meet for the third time. 
All the way back to December when the Big Ten play started for both of these teams. Both went into that 0-3 hole and both have dug out of it beautifully. Matchup zone here that has man-to-man -man tendencies and can be confusing. The line with a short shot clock here. Danger intercepted it from Hawkins, maybe, and he's going to go to work with one. He gets it up and can't score. Rebound tipped by McCaffrey and Rodgers and last by Rodgers. He saw Danger. He's a little confused there. I thought he got a nice shot up, but just didn't fall for him. Did you also think that pass was intended for Hawkins? Yeah, there was. And But you know what? As a player, Danger did the right thing. You don't make an assumption. You go get the ball that's near you. Mm -hmm. In the lane, it's Perkins going to the free throw line. Got jostled a couple of times and nearly had a three-point play chance. Well, when Tony Perkins gets inside the defense, he is a handful. He's strong, he's crafty, and he understands how to draw contact. Almost gets a... Old school and one opportunity. You know how sometimes defensive linemen talk about the smaller running backs. They say they're difficult to see behind the line. I kind of feel like Perkins has that quality when he gets in the lane. He, he also gets his center of gravity lower than the people that he's going against. So that's always an advantage. And, you know, his arms are a little bit longer than you think. He's a little bit quicker and stronger than you think. And he uses that to his advantage. He started the last 15 for the Hawkeyes in his sophomore year. It's a four-point game again. They pressure one more time. I will start to turn it up as the game goes on. Early on, they kind of show you, but not really aggressively. But I'll start to turn up the aggressiveness. Oh, my goodness. Tough shot for Jaden Epps against Stanford. Gotta check his birth certificate. They keep saying he's a freshman. <laughs> He's playing much bigger than that. Now Murray with a falling defender. Shannon, his second personal. Jaden Epps, unlike a lot of players in college basketball, when the shot clock is running down, he doesn't settle for contested jump shots. He gets to the rim, and that ability to finish, man, that is pretty. I love how your family knew that you were going to be a college basketball player so much that they put your eligibility on your birth certificate. <laughs> That's what I just learned moments ago. That's how precocious you were as a player. Oh, that was pretty good, Jason. My dad will appreciate that. Uh, it's two free throws coming for Perkins. I mean, we knew from a very young age that young Steven was going to be a great college basketball player. Well, that foul on Danger is his third, by the way. Uh, Danger got caught with his hand in the cookie jar, and all of his teammates thought it was clean, but a lot of times the officials will call that one. That's six fouls against the Illini so far in six minutes. Five-point game. If you don't know about my partner's career, <laughs> part of the flying Illini, some great teams down there, the defensive player of the year, and you could pass it well, too. Well, it's easy to be able to pass when you've got Kendall Gill, Nick Anderson, Kenny Battle, Lowell Hamilton, and Marcus Liberty to throw the ball to. What happened to that passing ability? All you do on these shows is take shots. <laughs> Open looks everywhere. Here's a steal. Sanford up ahead. Murray in the lane. There's the Iowa pressure. Turning it up, forcing turnovers, and Chris Murray is going to finish this more often than not. Good, up, good pump fake, getting the defense off the floor, and able to finish. Holman Hawkins kind of not understanding what that call is. Oh, Rebracha the rebound. McCaffrey wanted to make that pass so badly, and Sanford missed the shot. Iowa this year has 77 more free throw makes than the opponents have attempts. And that foul number for Illinois in the bottom left of your screen is so big right now. No doubt about it, because now Iowa can live at the free throw line the rest of the game. Ooh. How about that move to get two and a foul for Epps and Illinois? I know I know the viewers are thinking, like, why is Bardo getting so excited on these layups? You got to look at the angles from where he's. Look at that. That's not a. That's not a normal.
normal angle off the glass. This kid is a magician at finishing around the bucket. He has attacked Peyton Sanford directly a couple times here in the second half. And I think you're going to see that from the Illini. I think they like that matchup when Sanford is on the perimeter. Five-point game for Illinois. Epps in the second half has nine already. On the Illini, I've had really nice responses to this Iowa team pushing themselves back into the game. McCaffrey whirling in the lane, wants to pass. Rebracha against Meyer. Scores! That's a really good decision by the Hawkeyes. Knowing that Meyer has three fouls, Rebracha was going to go at him. Nice decision and recognition by the Hawkeyes. Hawkins a touch pass. Uh -oh. Epps knocks down another three. Uh-oh. Epps is hot. And why not know it? So they're going to feed him down the stretch. That was basically a one-timer from Coleman Hawkins to Epps. After a Racha on Hawkins this time. On the back door, cut two from Perkins down the baseline. Beautiful cut by Perkins. I'm telling you, this is the, this is the guy that Iowa needs to see on a more consistent basis. Murray went for the steal. Shannon for Hawkins, and Iowa recovers well enough. Epps has the last 12 for Illinois. He wants more. I'm going to take that heat check. He's hot right now. That's what the Illini do. They get the ball to the hot hand. A foul on Shannon, and now the free throw parade begins. It's the third on Shannon. Hey, Jaden Epps, how about this kid? The freshman is coming to life here. This Chris Murray to the free throw line. That's good. Illinois foul trouble starting to mount here with four holding three personal fouls and key guys. Yeah, and this is plays into the hands of the Hawkeyes. This is what they do. They get you in the second half and they put you, they put you in the bonus so that they can get to the free throw line. That allows them to set up the three-quarter court pressure as well. 14 free throw tries for Iowa, 7 for 7 for Illinois so far as Melendez goes to the bench. Shannon, Danger, Meyer all on the floor with three personal fouls together. And there is that pressure you're talking about. The line I don't look really good against it right now. They look a little discombobulated. Tough step intercepted by Rebracha. Yeah, the balance wasn't good there, but that's what Iowa does to you. Well, you saw that come. Yeah, I can see it. When Meyer has to come up and get the inbounds pass like that, the line are off balance. But is trying to get Harris's hands off of him. Sanford didn't have the space he wanted. At the sideline, Sanford taken away. Here comes Shannon and a foul by McCaffrey and a smart foul at that. Yes. Because McCaffrey knows that once that freight train known as Terrence Shannon Jr. gets downhill, not much you can do against it. Look at the quick hands here. Sanford. Maybe out of character a little bit. Sanford trying to handle too much. And against an elite defender, Shannon's going to have the advantage there. As he did with the steal, Iowa just does not turn the ball over very much at all, typically. Uh, Situations like that, less than 11 a game. To the corner, Shannon had a wide open look. Oh, Meyer comes out of nowhere. Monster offensive rebound. And then, watch where Matthew Walker comes from on this offensive rebound. This is one of the reasons Illinois is so good on the glass. He comes from the opposite side. And one of the things in that matchup zone for Iowa, when you're guarding a, a space, you got to go seek out a body to keep off the glass. They don't do it that time. Oh, you got to get it to danger when he's open. Through Harris for Meyer. Meyer is hit and fouled. Now he was looking for a foul on a jump shot in the same spot on the other end in the first half. Here he draws the third on Murray. 
when you see Murray kind of closes out and he's not under control, there's obvious contact there on the on the right arm, right there on the release. Myers, 78 percent foul shooter, has his first point since the 5:51 mark of the first half. I think somebody was saying something to Meyer because he has a big smile on his face. I love how he responds to the gamesmanship that takes place inside of the game. Yeah, he has the feel of a guy who could be in the next Will Ferrell movie about basketball. He's a great player and he has a sense of humor. Here's Perkins. Got it for two. Oh, Perkins is finding his spots off the ball screen. He loves that key area. Just a 16, 17 feet he is money. Danger. Oh, a little ballet from Danger. Oh, Danger's got that in his game now. Inside of eight feet, he can go with his right or left on those runners. McCaffrey curling and missing rebound for Rodgers. Why not have numbers if they can take advantage of it? Yeah, Rabracha took a spill, and that leads to Hawkins missing a three. Danger stops that hole. Oh, the Illini is starting to flex their muscles on the offensive glass. Last couple times had multiple opportunities. That's a bump, and Rodgers called for his fourth personal. So Ty Rodgers playing a lot of minutes might have to come off. Yeah, oh, there's no doubt. Nice cross-court pass. Hawkins gets a good look, but Danger controlling the offensive glass and the nice putback. Illinois plus 12 on the glass right now in a series that has been lopsided rebounding-wise in recent years. Yeah, and I think Iowa can combat that the way that they shoot the three-point shot. And so they're over four here in the second half. They hit five in the first half, so... Iowa can get loose at any point from three-point line, and that's how they try to overcome that rebound discrepancy. Let's go back to the Myers shot when he got the three free throws. This is very, very close. It was called a three-point shot. It does look like there's a little daylight over there, but worth revisiting. Yeah. If, he, if he wore size 15, that would have been a two. You're saying you, you wore like size 7? No, he wore so size you could avoid, No, I'm saying so you can avoid that sort of thing. But we need to get you a 14 and Brad Underwood shoe. That's right. That we learned before the game today. Yeah. See Brad's orange kicks over there. Man, that was a sweep. 2 and 7 area code on one shoe. Got the fighting line out on the other. Harris trying to drop it off in traffic and the gridlock gets it taken away. Murray gets tripped and fouled. And it's on Harris. They know where to find you in case they do want to send you a pair of those size 14s, which would look great on my guy, Stephen Bardo. Iowa has been very effective from the foul line. You see that differential, the greatest in the Big Ten, and that's wild considering what Purdue has done from the line as well. Yeah, and so, you know, Purdue, where E is, a, is the majority of the recipient of those opportunities, Iowa spreads the love around with their scores. Now, the interesting thing in this game is Murray hits this shot. Illinois is only up three, and it feels like they've dominated the second half, but Iowa is right there. It's in part because Iowa is 12 of 13 from the foul line in the second half. Near 10 second call, they just got it across, and a travel call by Lewis Garrison on the far side. Well, that's what the Hawkeye pressure does. Speeds you up a little bit. R.J. Melendez gets the ball. Now watch Jay Nepps. He really has to hustle to get the ball over the line. And then R.J. Melendez gets going too quickly. Riley Mulvey practicing for the next dance contest here in Iowa City. Mulvey's well, been spotted on camera doing some interesting celebration. He has. He is uh, the spirit king on the bench, playing a couple minutes earlier today in the first half. Perkins missed it wide left. Rebound for Iowa. That's swatted into next Tuesday off the hand of Sanford. Coleman Hawkins got in there. 
Illini, our best block, shot blocking team in the Big Ten. Showing you a little bit of why. Oof. You got to finish over 6'10, 6'9, 6'10 inside. And Hawkins with a volleyball spike. Sort of a, a very calm over Carver Hawkeye Arena right now. Tim Anderson, assistant from Illinois, you can hear him screaming. Sanford needed just a little slice of daylight to tie the game. Great poise by the Hawkeyes, tying this game up. Now the whole crowd involved. From zero to 60 in a couple of seconds here. That's on the hunt again. Little stop and start. That is brilliant. Oh my goodness. Jay Nepps putting on a clinic here. Murray trailing. Rocks the lead. Missed it. It's a good look for Murray. Nice action by the Hawkeye. It's only the first week of February. No. Yeah. So competitive, the Big Ten this year. Illinois taking its time offensively, picking a spot. Shannon missed it. Hawkins is fouled. Again, a clean look at a rebound on the offensive end. Well, we got a good one. We tried to warn you all, don't go anywhere. Peyton Sanford. Long, best player. You know, I, I think it's going to be predicated on if they can keep a nice cushion with the Illini. They don't, the game doesn't get too far away from them, but I don't expect Chris to be over there long. Norman Hawkins missed the second one. Meyer almost got his clutches on it, and now he picks up foul number four. That was... Uh, that wasn't a good scenario there. They're talking about. Oh, they're gonna, re, they're gonna review this. They think it might be a hook and hold situation. Watch, watch the arm here. A Perkins. Yeah, let's see. Watch the left arm of Perkins there. I don't know how you call that though. Once the ball is in the possession of a player's hand. Watch, Perkins has the ball, but there's definitely, he's definitely hooking Meyer there, but he's got the ball in his hands. Brad Underwood pleading his case with Rob Riley. It's going to be a common foul on Meyer. It's his fourth. And so Perkins will go to the free throw line for two shots. Looks like the right call there. Oh, I think so. And it was a quick decision by these three officials who've been outstanding today. I'll second that, Jason. Under the circumstances with the, the history of these two programs, this could be a powder keg, but they've done a fantastic job this afternoon. Yeah, it's in no way been about the official. No. It's been about the play, and they've gotten the close calls right. Everything you can ask for from Rob Riley, Courtney Green, and Lewis Garrison, and everything you can ask from Illinois and Iowa as well. A one-point game. That heat is starting to really build on Illinois. Yeah, Iowa does a, a magnificent job in the second half of adjusting how they attack you. Keep you on your heels. Jaden Epps trying to glide to the rim again. He's closed off. Shannon with two seconds has to heave it. Missed it. Rebound. Sanford saves it. Great hustle by Sanford. Kept Rogers off the glass. Was able to maintain possession. Last time Iowa led was 39-38. Very early here in the second half. Second place on the line for Illinois in the Big Ten. Euless for Sanford with four. Locked up Sanford. Left it short. Perkins with point eight got fouled. Boy, that's a heck of a break for Iowa. 
I thought Epps did a fantastic job closing out on Sanford, forcing a very difficult miss. And then watch Perkins go to the rim and just beats Coleman Hawkins on the air ball. Now Hawkins was arguing that he got held by Perkins around the corner. We are tied at 65. Tony Perkins in the second half, 11 for 11 from the foul line. Tell you what, this is how Iowa beats their opponents, especially in this building. So it's playing into their hands here. First lead since 39 38 for the Hawkeyes. So you kind of offensive set the line are going to implement here. A uh, nice hard hands by Robracha. Epps misses. Hawkins slides in for the rebound. Oh, Hawkins needs to go and do this. Off the tenth offensive rebound for Illinois today. Hawkins can't score. Eulis can't get the rebound, and Hawkins is going to the free throw line. You said it, Stephen. Hawkins had the size advantage, and he takes care of the opportunity right now. It's a heck of an offensive individual effort. Look at this. He misses the shot. He goes back and gets his own miss and forces the contact. Good job at Coleman Hawkins being aggressive. points from the foul line today. And that's no good. He was five for five. He's missed two in a row. RJ Melinda is coming in in a critical juncture for the Illini with Rogers in foul trouble. from the free throw line this season. They were pretty good against Nebraska, but we've seen them in recent Big Ten play struggle from the line. 313th in the country coming into today. Perkins resets the dribble. And scores! See, on the other side, when Coleman Hawkins took advantage of the matchup, Tony Perkins comes back and does the same thing against Hawkins. Brad Underwood wants a timeout. Here it comes! Watch you this year. He's denying the basketball to Epps. Danger out high. 20 to shoot for the Illini. McCaffrey draped on Shannon. Trying to drive him into the lane. It's a foul and two for Shannon. Oh, man. Brad Underwood comes up with a call right here. You get Shannon on the elbow. You clear out. He goes long one. Look at the space that that call created. And then your player goes and gets you a bucket. Boy, what a response by the Illini. You said it early. Crowding Shannon is not a good idea. He creates contact so well when he ties the ball down. Oh, man. I'm so impressed with that play call. There's a horns action to get Shannon at the, the elbow, and he took advantage of the, of the matchup with Connor McCaffrey. Five flat to go. 68 all. Harris has had a really nice defensive ball game. Oh, and Perkins still beating. <laughs> I love seeing offense. And we are seeing plenty of it. Tony Perkins getting busy. Shannon barreling into McCaffrey again. And another whistle against Iowa. That's four on McCaffrey. Back to Perkins. I'll tell you what, Sincere Harris couldn't have been in better position, but it doesn't matter when you have an elite score that's hot. The, the little bump, the little fade, and Terrence Shannon getting all the way to the bucket. I know the Hawkeye fans didn't like that call, but Terrence Shannon does this as well as anybody in the, in the league. The uh, two-syllable chant we heard from the Iowa fans suggesting that they're into farming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Jason, are we just paid here today? I mean, maybe. Oh two for goodness. two for Shannon. We're even at 70. Oh, my goodness. This is almost as entertaining as the game itself. You know what? Having a blast, Jason. Hey, they have put on a show they have. for us here in Iowa City. Great rivalry. That's going to be a foul against Shannon for the push. That's his fourth person. So, Sparks flying off our foul graphic. Rogers has four. Shannon has four. Meyer has four. McCaffrey and Murray have four for Iowa. Here's the thing. With when you look at that's that's a visual of everybody who doesn't have foul trouble there you the go way, first there. But, but when you look at the fouls on the Illini side people will say wow the Illini got called for more fouls but the fouls that they're committing are not the smartest fouls Meyer goes over the back one time Shannon tries to go through a screen here and it's obvious that that's a foul so even though Iowa has an advantage in that area Yolanda have to be smarter defensively. Well, you just see the lather that Rebrach has worked up and the sweat and the as he knocks down the free throw. It's a one-point game again. Well, Rebrach is now in double figures, but boy, he's had to work to get there. There's all that foul trouble we were talking about. Big names in peril here, right on the edge. Iowa at the line this half, 18 for 19. And you know what? This has been an excellent job by the Hawkeyes having this game in their favor with Chris Murray on the bench. That's allowed Fran McCaffrey to keep him on the bench longer than maybe he wanted to. That was at the seven and a half mark that Murray went out. We have not seen him since. X swaying into the lane. Meyer ball fake, missed it for three. Hawkins tipped it to Danger. That was exceptional, and Danger is fouled on the way up. Great call, Jason. That was exceptional. Man, oh man, what a game. On the stretch. Murray was out more than three minutes, nearly four. Three minutes, 40 seconds. Danger at the line. That was a line drive and it wouldn't sit for him. Totally different look to that shot than the last time he was at the line. Yeah, and, it's, it, and it looks like it's in his head right now. And you're looking at Connor McCaffrey doing the count on the line, trying to mess with him a little bit. That's very nice. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Connor McCaffrey's seen a lot of Big Ten basketball. He knows what he's doing out there. He's a grad student now this year. One point game for Iowa. Career day for Tony Perkins, and he will go to the line. Shannon and Danger were there, and let's see. It is against Danger. That's his fourth. Tony Perkins, career high, building up. Well, the thing that you'll notice in what he's done today, it's all inside the three-point line. He's taken advantage of strength. He's done a great job at the free throw line, and... He has not had poor attempts. All of his attempts have been high percentage. Two for two for Tony Perkins. 14 for 14 from the line. The fourth most made free throws without a miss in a game this year in D1 basketball. Excellent job of taking advantage of That's why they call three. Epps locks it down low. Danger to stop. Great lead pass by Epps. Rebracha trying to help. Got out of position. Led over the top. The danger does the rest. Danger in foul trouble with four. Nearing a double-double. Perkins to that foul line again. He runs it there today. Yeah, he's going to get there the rest of the game. The line on foul trouble. They go man-to-man. -man. He's going to do that every time. And slides it down the sideline. Meyer ties the game. Wow. Oh, Brad Underwood won a timeout and couldn't get it. That's a heck of a look by Meyer. Shot maker. Did we expect anything different, Jason? Not at all. The 167th meeting. Illinois and Iowa. Sanford dissuaded by Danger's presence. 
They will equip Tony Perkins. Rip block to the screen. Perkins lost the dribble. McCaffrey short in the corner. Sanford whisks it back in, and here's Meyer. Meyer sees an open side and thought about a three. He thought about it. Two to go. We're tied. Shannon. That's no good. It's wide right. On the tip. It won't fall. A lot of hands in there. And it's going to be Illini basketball. Well, they're going to look. It's under two to go so they can look. I'm not sure that the Illini wanted that shot from Shannon. It's all good nature. And then Brad turns his attention to Courtney Green on the way up the floor. <laughs> Murray. Got it to Rebranta. He's denied at the rim. Hawkins was there. McCaffrey for Sanford. Excellent. Great job of, the, of Iowa. They do a fantastic job of spraying the basketball on the perimeter after they get an offensive rebound. It's the best time to take a three when the defense is scrambling. Danger are trying to close out but not soon enough. Sanford will open look. Hayden Sanford, a release of a quarterback that could trigger Iowa by three. Coleman Hawkins missed it off the iron. Regrets of the rebound for Iowa. And you know who made the most important play that time? Tony Perkins. Kept Dane Danger off the offensive glass. Did a great job on the box out. They're going to run the same action they did last time. They're going to get Chris Murray on the post up. Back to the basket against Hawkins. Now a face up with four, now three. Murray, one leg, missed it. Short rebound to line on. Shannon wants to go to the rim. Steps through and misses rebound for Murray. He's got a double team there. Timeouts available and a foul against Illinois with 29.4 to go. Shannon had a shot at it. He gets downhill, and I think he was expecting contact, and he didn't get it. And he just comes up on the miss. But he had an opportunity there. And that was the right play to get him in the fast break situation. Just doesn't get the finish. Shannon is done. Melendez is in for him. Iowa trying to gum up the middle of the Big Ten even more than it already was. Iowa also trying to win against Illinois for the first time in six meetings. And Murray at the line where Iowa is 24 for 26 today. And 25 for 27. We talked about what needed to happen if Chris Murray hits this shot. They've got their Big Ten average here today. Left it short. Four-point game. 25 seconds to go. X on the move. This is out of bounds. Tipped, and it's going to stay with Illinois. Fran McCaffrey wants to review it. He's going to get what he wants. They'll go to the monitor. Lewis Garrison made the call on the near side, and he did it immediately. Melendez went down to the ground. Sanford can't believe it. I mean, now if you're the Illini, this might be best case scenario. With Melendez on the line, he's got to convert. It's lower body contact. That's yeah. Foul there. Yeah. No, I, I like the foul. I like the call. Melendez, 22 for 28 at the line all year. This one's good. That's big because he's coming off the bench kind of cold. Oh, it looks like 
Oh, Ty Rogers is going to come into the game for Melendez if he gets it. He makes this free throw. Rogers with four fouls. He would not be an option to commit a foul. You'd lose him. Melendez hits the free throw. And here comes Rogers. And we'll get a timeout, Illinois. You play. 19.2. Two timeouts left for the Hawkeyes. McCaffrey faked the deep pass. Sanford marked by Melendez. And there's a timeout by Peyton Sanford. 15 seconds to go. Peyton Sanford did the right thing in that scenario. You don't want to give the ball up if you don't have to. He's the highest percentage shooter on the team. And so he just helped. McCaffrey gets it in in the corner. Iowa does have a timeout remaining, and there is the final timeout for the Hawkeyes. And they'll have 1.9 seconds to get the ball across half court. When they in, when they get the ball back. This is a great job by the I don't think they have to get it over half court in, in 1.9. But it's stacked up here. To Perkins, he's able to front for it, and he is fouled. That's a great job of Iowa in that setup. You see how high they were, Jason, to give themselves space to get the ball, and they were under the rest to get it over half court. See, so Ruler slips. Tommy Perkins gets the ball, gets over half court in time, and receives a foul. We saw Iowa with time shrinking on the clock set up a different look at the inbound pass there. And the free throw is good. So even if Perkins hits this, there's still plenty of time. The Illini with one timeout. They would look to get it in, advance quickly, and get a shot up. He rims it out. Three point game. Do you foul if you're Iowa? We'll see how they play it. Melendez for Epps for the tie. It's short. Hawkins is fouled and two free throws coming for the Illini. Oh, oh, Peyton Sanford got away with a foul on Jaden Epps' shot. Take Let's a look see. at the. You see Melendez right here gets it over to Epps. Oh, uh, you know what? That's a good closeout. I stand corrected. That's a good close. Watch his hand high. That's a good closeout. Good defense by Peyton Sanford. Got to make one and miss here, right? Yeah. There's the make. And that's the toughest one. And we'll get a timeout, Illinois. That Watch Jaden Epps. Nobody... On the perimeter. There it is. Missed it off the front end. And the rebound, McCaffrey. Iowa finds a way. 81-79. Great game in this storied rivalry once again.